The people had their say and voted to leave the European Union. MPs, our elected representatives, had their say and voted by a huge majority to put no obstacles in the way of Article 50, which triggers the start of the Brexit process. Now, members of the House of Lords, the unelected chamber, get their say. And this is where it may become more difficult for the government because there are 805 men and women in the Lords and only 252 of them are Conservatives. One of them is Jonathan Hill and he is a former British commissioner in the EU. And when the uh, leader of the opposition in the Lords, uh, Lord Hill, talks about um, a meaningful vote at the end of this on whatever deal may or may not be produced by the Prime Minister, what's your reaction to that? Well, I think we have to think about how the negotiation is going to work in practice. And if you think of this from the point of view of the European side, where they're going to have to cobble together the views of 27 different member states, that they are going to have to have an interlocutor from Britain uh, in whom they have confidence that they'll be able to deliver what they say they'll deliver. They have to trust that what uh, the Prime Minister says, what David Davis says, they can deliver on. And so I think the idea that at the end of that process of negotiation, a British negotiator says, oh, I'm terribly sorry, that deal that I've just offered to you and struck with you, I'm afraid that Parliament have just voted on it and have uh, changed the terms. I don't see how we can negotiate in good faith uh, if we were to proceed on that basis. But what um, Lady Smith said on this programme half an hour ago, 40 minutes ago, was that they can not intervene at the stage that you described there, but they can, during the course of the negotiations, if they are concerned about something, whether it's free movement, whatever it happens to be, whether it's single market, whatever, they can bring pressure to bear and they can get engaged in the negotiation then. Does that make sense to you? Well, I think, first of all, clearly Parliament is uh, going to have an important role in this whole process. But well, what is, is that role? Is, well, the role is, uh, in House of Lords today, we're going to see, starting the process, second reading debate, that role of um, uh, applying pressure on government ministers, having them there in the House of Lords, interrogating their thinking, making the case, expressing views on behalf of people. And a fifth, at the end of that process, they say, yeah, heard what you had to say, on balance, we'll stick with the, our original plans. Thanks very much. Well, I do think, because of the reason I just gave, that the British government and it's the Europeans with whom they're negotiating have to know, as they go through the process, at the point at which they kind of come to terms, that those terms are going to be deliverable in Britain. Otherwise, I don't understand why Mr Barnier or the rest of them will, be, will go through that process with us if they think at the end that they can't trust what we say. So I think it's absolutely right that uh, Parliament applies this pressure, that it scrutinises, that it, uh, it, it may, the House of Lords coming up in the next couple of days, ask the Commons to think again. That's its proper traditional role. But in the negotiation, uh, I think we have to cut the Prime Minister and the government some slack and they have to be prepared to negotiate on our behalf in good faith. So it is almost meaningless, this process, this parliamentary process is almost meaningless. Yes, there will be a vote at the end of it, but it will be a, a cliff edge vote. It will mean either we stay in, we, 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 we accept the deal or we reject the deal. If we reject the deal, God knows what happens. Nobody knows. I mean, really, nobody knows, do they? Well, I don't think, first of all, that it is meaningless uh, to have a long process whereby Parliament is going to be uh, engaged in the process of legislation. The great big bill that's going to be coming, uh, they'll be working through that. In Massive bill. Massive bill. Uh, so to, 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 to suggest that there isn't a proper role there, I think, is wrong. Uh, but I do think when it comes to it, uh, that um, we will have to uh, present Parliament with a straight choice uh, between uh, going ahead with what the government negotiates or else actually deciding uh, not to sign up to what's on the table, in which case, to answer your question, uh, I think we would be uh, leaving uh, without any kind of uh, treaty deal and we would be uh, operating on WTO rules. You know how Brussels, for want of a better shorthand, works. You've lived there and worked there for years and years. So you are intimately been intimately involved in it. How easy is it going to be, uh, whatever deal the Prime Minister eventually presents to them, how easy is it then going to be for the 27 countries to reach an agreement? It, it is going to be a complex process because you have uh, three main institutions involved, the Commission, the Council, 
which represents the member states and the European Parliament. And then within the Council, you've got 27 different member states, all of whom are sovereign nations, with uh, their own views and priorities. That is going to be complex. That's why I think it is vitally important that we offer as much consistency and as clarity uh, as we possibly can throughout, throughout the process. And unanimity in the end. Uh, yes, it needs to be. It needs to be done on that. Um, I'm, my view is at the moment that actually um, across Europe, the view is that they would like to do a deal with us if they can. I think most people want to avoid the bust up that could happen. Uh, but if we're going to manage to do that, I think that in the UK, we have to be a bit more alive to the thinking that's going on in Europe. And I think our own debate, our own political debate in the UK is extremely polarised. I don't think it's moved on that much since uh, June. Whereas I think business is starting to think more practically about the changes we might need to make. I think in politics we're still stuck. So one of the things I'm obsessed about is how we bring Remainers and Leavers together to think constructively about the future instead of refighting the referendum by proxy. But, but you'll never bring Remainers and Leavers together, will you? You heard Tony Blair, for instance, just a few days ago. You heard Peter Mandelson yesterday. They are not going to accept it with, with, a, with the kind of shrug of the shoulders in the end and say, well, OK, fair enough. I don't think they are where most people I talk to in business and other people outside politics are. I mean, one of the things that I'm going to be doing with a group of leavers in April is organise a dirty great conference to bring together leavers and remainers. And actually, the response that we have had from that uh, has been extremely encouraging. And it shows that outside politics... Uh, people do want to move on. I think Mr Blair uh, is wrong uh, in what he said and the conclusions he drew. I don't think uh, you can have a referendum, say to the British people, uh, this is the most important decision you're going to make in your life, we'll respect the result, and then afterwards uh, change, change, try and get them to change their mind. Is it possible that we could produce a deal in a couple of years from now that would be acceptable, broadly acceptable to all the constituent parts in this country, give it to Brussels and somebody on the other side of the channel will say, one country or the other will say, actually, you know what, we don't like this deal and therefore it's scuppered. Mm. I don't think that would be likely because I think the way the dynamic will work is either there will be agreement early on that we've got shared objectives, that we want to do a deal, and therefore we want to negotiate, in which case I think the negotiating dynamic of the European Union will kick in. It's what a lot of them do for a living. It's what they spend their time doing negotiating. So I think, uh, personally, that the greater risk is that we have a political blow-up before the negotiation starts or at the beginning of the negotiation. But I think if we get into it, there would be lots of bumps along the way. It is not going to be easy. People who tell you it's going to be easy are delusional. It's not. But that if we start, we'll be able to find our way to a conclusion. Lord Hill, many thanks.